Hello, my name is Alex. This is another episode of the Corporate Cowboys podcast. Proof of life. Today is Monday, March 7, 2022. And you boys tested positive for the motherfucking Rona. But you know how that goes. Uh, Quarantine, isolating, whatever, what have you. But uh, obviously, I mean, it's essential to get out and get some air see people do things make it to appointments fucking the world keeps turning you can't just get caught up have somebody tell you what you can and can't do i mean if you can't manage it's because uh you're fev- you're you're feeling really feverish you're feeling really weak i mean the symptoms are are that heavy if the symptoms are that strong take care of yourself go to church go to the fucking hospital if need be or uh, take up, uh, take up some aid upon yourself, man. Some fucking tea, some fucking chicken soup. But my energy levels are doing just fine, honestly. I mean, I'm, I'm getting through it. I'm surviving. I'm making it through. And I don't have much to worry about except, uh, except life. I mean, I've been, I've been living... I've been living normally since the start of this entire thing, fucking two years ago. For the most part, just got to recognize that the world doesn't stop just because some folks at the top who think they have a position of power wanted to stop. I mean, what the fuck am I? What the fuck do I look like? A bitch? Taking and following orders? regulations and guidelines no i mean i'll consider them i'll consider any extrinsic evidence any outside evidence that might inform my perspective on life or help me make a more informed decision about how i'm taking care of myself but i'm not just gonna blindly jump out there and poke myself with anything people have that are handing out I don't give a shit if it comes with, <laughs> with with free donuts, with free sandwiches and fries and shakes. I don't give a fuck what it comes with. If I can't have the information behind it to help me make a decision, then I'm making no decision. I'm not partaking of any of. Uh, I'm not partaking in that system in the least, in the least, in the slightest. So, taking things slowly, I've got to ask myself, how do I become better or come out better of this situation? I mean, I'm on somebody's list somewhere. I ended up on somebody's radar having to get tested. So, that said, how, how, do, I, how do I come back better? Well, I got to look back at what I have been doing. Have I been improving myself? And and what have I been doing to do so? Reading, a lot of reading, some writing and uh, research. Reading, research, and writing. I mean, it sounds boring as fuck. And if if you're listening to me now when you're like in your early 20s, if you're in your teens even, that's probably sounds boring as fuck. You want to be out there in the street doing hood rat shit with your friends. I've been there. I've done that. And if uh and if I could if I can impart any of my experience without having you go through it, I'm going to tell you the good parts and the bad parts about it. Essentially half at least half of the shit that I did when I was in my teens and 20s did not help me in corporate. Really, the only thing that helped me in corporate was being outgoing, being outspoken, but being soft-spoken too. Like You don't want to always be obnoxious. I was somewhat obnoxious growing up and, and becoming an adult. I was a class clown of sorts coming up through school and getting uh getting attention vying for attention and and getting into trouble 
in order to uh, get that attention? Was I the smartest? Uh, no, no. I definitely wasn't the dumbest. I mean, I was smart enough to to get attention and and attain a, a small following of people who thought I was funny, people who thought I was charismatic, and that energy, that specific energy is what helped me develop into a better professional later on in corporate. I mean, it took a couple of uh, crazy turns and uh, a hairpin trigger <laughs> to, to really convince me that corporate was the future. And this was what? Damn, I was already 19, 20. <laughs> so, so I... I did my shit like I I I did my um my uh my <clears throat> my maturing my coming of age in my late 20s early late teens early 20s and in my early 20s is when when the light bulb having clicked on I uh became I began to fine tune it and find what exactly I needed to do to better myself. And it started with books, man. It started with books. I think it's because I was in a position where I graduated high school. So I was no longer within in uh, a, a formal organizational structure, like a formal institution that had some semblance of order. So as soon as there was no order, I mean, I, I ran fucking buck wild for a cool minute until until it dawned on me that I had to lighten up and improve and develop myself or I would be left behind. I mean, motherfuckers, most motherfuckers out here aren't extending their hands, uh, aren't, aren't lending a hand, aren't holding a hand out for people who are striving and aspiring to be professionals to take hold of, to grab hold of and, and, and have that support, that, that moral support and help in and of itself, like as a resource in the form of assistance, it's hard to come by. It's hard to come by. So now that I'm older, if I can provide that assistance, if I can be a resource to those who either listen to the podcast or those in my immediate circle who need a uh, uh, a third, a second opinion or or a third perspective, a third party perspective, you know, some somebody neutral, then I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Um, at the end of the day, the responsibility is on ourselves. We have to hold ourselves accountable. We can't we can't say oh because I'm a product of my environment I'm just going to remain a piece of shit, right? There's a whole lot of motherfuckers out in corporate who came up in a hard knock environment and they've become they've become better for it. They've been made better for it. Had they, um, had they leaned on, on their upbringing, had they relied on their upbringing, you know, being a piece of shit, then they're liable to end up as one. They're liable to get knocked off as one. I mean, there's a difference between um, self, self degradating, self degradating humor, self hold up, self deprecating humor. And um, and then discounting one's own um, efforts and achievements. So self-deprecating humor, I, I feel like uh, it, it it can carry you uh, a lot in the corporate setting and the corporate environment because. It's uh, it requires a sort of a awareness. It requires an awareness of where you've been, where you come from, and uh, and also the understanding 
of where you are now being that you are no longer where you used to be, right? But uh, discounting one's honor or discounting one's dignity on a, on a human level can be detrimental and um, can actually hurt a professional because then that tells the person that you're interacting with that you don't actually respect yourself regardless of, of where you were from, where, where you came from. Now, that's a, that's a fine line to straddle between self-deprecating and, um, and, uh, and discounting. And frankly, that requires uh, an increased ability, an increase in personal ability to evaluate one's position in life, to evaluate one's role as a professional in their circle, as a corporate cowboy in corporate. Now, it, it, it sounds deeper than it actually is. And uh, this is mostly, again, me just pontificating on this idea of, of confidentiality between yourself as a person and yourself as a professional. And I, I'm not saying that you should, you know, go out, out of your way and confess to your social network that, that you are hold certain beliefs, um, certain ideals, but this is more of a, again, of, of a internal audit, uh, self-evaluation of my own self that I don't expect a lot of people to, to relate to or even want to um, understand. But in using this platform as a way of oratory practice, I feel like, or I believe, it's important to wrestle with these concepts and labor at being able to elaborate and describe them and explain them effectively and with enough vision that when they are used in public, when they are presented in a more public setting or in a more personal setting, <laughs> that the idea just rolls out of the head and the words roll right off of the tongue. So this practice, this social skill in practicum, practicum, this, this, this simulation, if you will, it's got its benefits and it's definitely got its disadvantages. But because I haven't had a whole ton of interaction in the past couple of days because of this fucking test, I think it's best that I, I practice um, just using the podcast, essentially. There will be better themes coming up. I mean, there are always good themes. I think uh, what's common in the headlines right now, what's popping in the headlines right now, and what's really hot and people are commenting on uh, as if they know any better is uh, this, this little conflict that folks want to escalate and magnify to a fucking world level between 
between moneyed up oligarchs and uh, and ex-business partners. <laughs> That's all it is, man. You want to break it down into corporate terms? That's all it is. It's just business that goes sour. Why? Because business is war. And I've been saying this, and I, I've said it a hundred times before, and I'll say it a thousand times again. Probably the one thing that I'll repeat with the same level of gusto as I did the first time. The first time it reached me in the form of an epiphany is that business is always personal, regardless of what the what they say in movies, regardless of of the the, the coolest lines in in what is it, Hollywood or San Francisco or China, anywhere. Business is always personal. It doesn't matter what form it takes. If it relates to business, it's personal as fuck. As such, it's war. It's always war. And all is fair in love and in war. Some people just love money that much that they'll equate the two as being one. With um, with spring right around the corner, I just want to remind you that the Instagram page is still down. Um, I'm going to find a way to uh, appeal to Instagram and get our page back up and running. But, you know, you can follow at your own risk. It's currently shadow banned. I'm unable to, to post anything. But the interaction is still there from time to time. I mean... Things that come across my timeline that look interesting, um, I, I can still comment on and and uh, tag others, or or just invite interaction that way. If uh, you would like to donate, there are a couple of links out there available. There's a PayPal, a Cash App, a Venmo. I mean, you're a smart person. You can find the link if you found this podcast. You can. I'm sure find the link, but we're in the process of changing some things around to make the podcast more accessible in the coming weeks. You should see those changes, uh, take effect. Again, my name is Alex and, um, this has been, I mean, it's been a pleasure. It's just Monday. So pleasure is all mine. <laughs> Have a nice week.